And let's dive in. All right. In tennis, if you're unfamiliar with the game, it's a racket sport, uh, a tennis set is considered to be finished when one of the players wins six games and the other one wins less than five. Or if both players win at least five games until one of the players wins seven. <clears throat> okay, so that's getting a little bit complicated, I guess, but I think we can handle it. Let's, uh, let's dive right in here. So we're gonna start by assigning some, uh, some constant values here. So we're gonna have a maximum value and a minimum value. And basically they're gonna be, the maximum is gonna be math.max of score one and score two. And the minimum, well, you guessed it, it's gonna be the min of score one and score two. And it just fits, look at that. Okay, so let's try returning max here. Let's see what we get from that. Uh, just Okay, sorry about that. So we're getting eight. And yeah, that seems like it's a maximum one there. Uh, what do we get from this one? Yeah, six, that's the bigger one. And, and notice in this case, it was score two. In this case, it was score one. It seems like this stuff's working. So that's cool. It's working. That's good. Uh, we could actually make this a little more efficient. I mean, there's kind of a, a sweet way we could do this. So you'll notice like we're using a destructuring assignment. This is basically the same as saying, const max is assigned the value of this and const min is assigned the value of this. You know, it's just doing two at once. We're not actually making like an array containing max and min. We're just assigning max and min both at the same time. So that's kind of nice. That's a destructuring assignment. Something I want to point out that that thing I was saying that we can do that's kind of sweet is this. So now we can just put score one and score two in an array together like that. But we don't necessarily want to give maximum the value score one. We don't necessarily want min to be the value score two. So what we'll do is we're going to sort these and we'll give it a sorting function because these are going to be like uh, integers. We're not comparing strings here. And we're going to do B minus A so that it sorts, so that it sorts it from maximum to minimum. And now when we run this, eh, same thing, but it's a little more, I think a little more nicer. Uh, yeah, a little more nicer. Anyway, the point is, uh, so we've got our max and our min, we can use those now. What situation is, is gonna make sense here? What situation are we looking for? Well, okay, basically we'll have a winner if maximum, if the higher score is greater than five, right? So if it's six or seven or whatever it is, and the minimum score is, uh, what does it have to be? It's got to be less than uh, less than five, right? Yeah, maximum is greater than five, minimum is less than five. Let's try running that. We'll see what we get. Okay, getting false for that one. So we're passing five out of eight. That's not too bad. Now this one, uh, we're giving it false. It should be true. The idea here is we've gotten to seven, so we haven't really handled the case where it's gonna be seven. So let's let's think about that for a minute. So we'll put that in parents and we'll say, or uh, max is seven. Okay, so if max made it to seven, then that's another way to win, okay? If max is seven, it, it doesn't matter if min is less than five. So let's run that. And, Okay, so maybe it does matter what min is. So in this case, we're saying true, but it should be false because we couldn't have both players getting the seven. It's not like they can both win a game at the same time, right? So, okay, max is seven. What else needs to be true about this? Well, basically, uh, minimum needs to be less than seven, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, minimum needs to be less than seven. Okay, but then we couldn't have this, right? Because if this one, if the minimum score was two, then this one would have been, the game would have been finished as soon as this guy hit six. So, okay, it's gotta be less than seven, but it's gotta be also greater than five. Uh, okay, so then 
we're getting false for this one. It should be true. Oh, uh, I guess greater than four is what I meant. It could be five, it could be six. It couldn't be less than uh, four or, uh, or less than five or greater than six. Yeah, okay, wait. So this is giving us true? Uh, huh, that's weird. Okay, min is less than seven, min is greater than four. But it's not, why would that be giving us true? Unless, oh, okay, okay. So it's giving us true because of this one over here. This one is saying max is greater than five, which it is here, and min is less than five. Yeah, okay, so maybe we should change this one to say max is six, and the other one is less than five. Oh, okay, so now we're passing all those. I'm just gonna rearrange this real quick because I don't really like the look of it. I wanted to say um, four is less than min and min is less than seven. That's what I want. Uh, just because I find it, it sort of has the appearance of like a double inequality there, you know, like if we were to cut out this part, four is, uh, sorry, min is between four and seven. So it's a bit more math-like in that sense. Okay, so is that good? Will that pass all the hidden tests and everything? Yeah, okay, cool. So that's not bad, but it's not really great either. Like, I don't really feel super about this. I don't really love all of this stuff in here. It feels a little complicated. It feels like there's a lot going on here. Maybe we don't need the extra fronts here, actually. I'm just realizing, because it's all ends. I don't think it matters what order they come in, so. Uh, Maybe that's like a slight improvement we can make. Yeah, I guess that's a slight improvement. But I want to look at this in a totally different way. Okay, so basically, I'm going to paste that back in. I'm going to delete this stuff. We're going to switch. Uh, actually, I'll keep the max and min stuff, but we'll switch this one over to tennis set one so that all we have is this now. Okay, and now I want to look at this in, I guess... The last one we did, the last challenge we did, we sort of looked at it in terms of actually simulating uh, the thing. Or, sorry, maybe that wasn't the last one, but in the infinite process one, we sort of looked at it in such a way that it actually simulated the infinite process. And then we looked at it in a way that sort of predicted the conditions under which uh, it would be an infinite process. Here I want to flip it around. So we started by sort of predicting the conditions that would make this uh, valid, a viable score. And now I want to flip it around and actually run the simulation. Okay, so we've got our max and min values up here. Now I want to come up with uh, a constructor for a new type of object, and it's going to be called player. Player. There we go. And the player will have a name, we'll say. And we'll start by giving it that name. And we'll say the number of points that it starts with is going to be zero. We'll give it a method called score, and the way it's gonna work is, actually, hold on a sec. Let's let's call it win game, okay? Yeah, win game. That doesn't mean they're winning the set. It means they won a game. Okay, it's gonna be a function. How's it gonna work? Well, basically, it's just gonna add one to points. Maybe I should call that games, but eh, oh well. Okay, so this.points, this.score, won't be better. Maybe this dot score. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make it this dot score. That's good. This dot score. We're being consistent with what we have up here, so that's good. Okay, cool. So we've got player. It's a new type of object. It's got two attributes. Um, one of them is name, the other is score. So name is just going to be a string, score is going to be a number. Win game is its one method, and basically, when we win a game, we're increasing the score by one. That's basically the idea. So let's start by uh, signing the players up. Okay, so we're gonna make two new players. We're gonna say const and variables we're gonna use for our, our two players here are gonna be winner and loser. That might seem a little harsh, but the idea is that we already know the scores here. So based on that, we know which player is gonna be the one who will end up winning and which one will end up losing. It's funny that I made that same spelling mistake twice. We need a name for our first player. Um, we'll call first player cool guy. Okay, and we need a name for our second player as well. There we go, I nailed it that time. 
Um, nice guy. Okay. If anyone has any suggestions on better names, let me know for now. Let's move this over just for a bit of extra room. Okay, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. So this is looking good. We've got a couple of players here. Let's just see if these are working. So we'll say return winner dot, uh, winner dot name. Cool guy. Okay, that's good. And we'll say return loser dot score. Okay, zero. That's what we expect. We haven't started the game yet. Okay, so now we want to start the game. So start, start the game, start the game, the, the game. There we go. Okay, cool. So we're basically get, gonna do a loop. We're gonna say uh, for like, i be assigned the value of zero, i is less than or equal to max, i plus plus. So we're gonna do sort of like a back and forth here. Okay. So what's gonna happen in this loop? Well, for sure. The winner is going to score a point or win a game. Uh, I'll just say score a point for now. Uh, we're then going to say if the loser is still in it. So basically, like if I is still less than or equal to the minimum score, then loser scores a point. OK. And I need some more room in here, so let's just do some enters. Okay, so uh, at that point, we want to check. So after we do our little rally here, each of them wins a game, or maybe just the winner, we want to ask ourselves, have we reached the end? You know, so is I going to be equal to max? And then if we've reached the end, we'll check for win conditions. Okay, that's basically it. So we'll start with this, winner scores a point. Well, that part's easy. We'll just say, we'll say winner dot win game. We're gonna run win game, okay? I guess we didn't really test that before, but we could do it now. So let's just build in some uh, extra room here. We'll say winner dot win game. We'll run that once and then we'll say return winner.score. And it's one. It was zero to begin with, now it's one because they won a game. Okay, cool. I'm convinced that that's working. So let's get back to this. So winner.win game. Is the loser still in it? We should check that. So how are we going to check that? Well, if i is less than or equal to min, because min is basically like the, the, um, highest score that the loser is going to get to in the game. That's what min was. These are like considered final scores, right? So the loser is going to get up to that. So we'll say loser dot win game in that case. It's not always going to happen if we get to a point, like let's say we were looking at this one. Uh, this would execute, uh, I guess like eight times. Well, okay, you know what? I should probably start i at, at one because otherwise like it's going to be equal max. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, this is going to keep executing. It's going to go eight times. And the first five times, the loser is going to score. He's going to win a game. But after that, we're going to stop that. This isn't going to happen anymore. So the loser's not, you know, still in it at that point, I guess we'd say. So then the question is, have we reached the end? We want to be asking ourselves that. So what would constitute reaching the end? Well, if I is max, you know, if I is equal to max, then we've reached the end. There's, there's nowhere left to go, right? So, uh, okay. If we get to the end here and we find that we're not, we're not there, you know, we haven't reached a score that's like six or more or something like that. Well then definitely re return false. In fact, I'm just going to put that at the end, return false. And then the way we'll handle this is we'll check for winning conditions inside here. And if we do find that, if we do find that there's a, a win, we'll return true right then and there. So if we don't get to a win, we'll end up running this return false at the end of it. Okay, so there's one more thing I wanna put in here. It's not just if we've reached the end, it's also if we've gone far enough. So if I is not greater than five, well, we don't have a winning condition. We haven't actually reached the point where uh, where one of these players would win because they don't have enough points. It has to be greater than five, right? It's, it's gotta be six or seven. So, okay, we wanna check for win conditions here. So what's gonna constitute win, win conditions? So first of all, uh, if I 
let's say is equal to seven. Okay, so if i is equal to seven, then there's basically one thing we need to check. So um, if, if winner scores seven, then uh, loser must have only five or six. Those are the only two conditions that this would make sense. That's kind of what we found below, right? So if the winner scores seven points, the loser can only have five or six. They can't have seven, they can't have four because then there's no way the, the winner would have actually gone all the way to seven. They definitely can't have more than seven. So basically the only situation is that they've got five or six. So we'll say, well, if loser dot, uh, I changed its score, right? Not points. So if loser dot score is equal to five, or if loser dot score is equal to six, then in that case, uh, yeah, they win. So we'll return true. In fact, uh, look, any string is gonna get typecasted true. So let's just return something like, uh, we're, we're gonna do a little string literal here. Uh, this is something we've done a couple times now, but basically I'm gonna build in the winner's name. So winner.name plus wins. Or no, I don't need the plus. That's the whole point of doing it this way, just wins. And maybe we'll do a little, um, uh, little smiley, little emoji there. Yeah, okay. So basically this here, just, just to be clear about how that's working, that's gonna be the same as saying winner.name plus the string wins. And actually we need a space in there and then, you know, the rest of that stuff. Okay, so I guess technically this is like, it looks like pretty much the same number of characters here, but I definitely, I like this way a lot myself, uh, just because it, it makes sense to me having this all as one string. It, it's, I've got a bit of an allergy to the idea of breaking it up like this, having like this thing concatenated with this thing, et cetera. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it that way. So, okay, great. All right, I'm, I don't wanna get too caught up in the little details here. So we're at this point now where we find uh, this is a potential win condition. It's a, a potential situation for a win here because we've reached the end. I is at max, right? And we're on our last iteration of the loop. And we know that it went long enough that it's greater than five. We, we could potentially be in for a win here. So we're saying, well, there are two situations. Either I is equal to seven, in which case uh, they could only legitimately win if the loser has five or six. Or, well, what's the other case here? That would be if, um, let's say we get to this point, i is not seven, so what would it be then? It, it would be six, I guess, right? So if it's not seven, it must be six. So we'll say if, um, well, hold on a sec, what do we need to check for? So if the winner has six points, or if winner scores six, just to be uh, consistent with what's above, then loser must have less than five. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Okay, so we'll say if loser not points less than five, return, and we'll do another one of these string literals here. We'll say, uh, Name wins, and we'll do a different emoji here. We'll do this one over here because uh, that'll sort of tell us like what type of win it was. You know, was it a real blowout where the other guy didn't even get to uh, to five? Was it? Yeah, uh, or was it like pretty close and but they clutched it out, sort of thing. So, okay, I think this is pretty good, but. I might actually have an issue with this one. Let's find out. Let's let's try running this and we'll see what happens. So, okay, yeah, this, this one's not working. So this is where, okay, the winner would have six points, the loser would have three points, 
and it's outputting false, but it should be true. Well, I thought that would fall under this one over here, but let's find out. So, okay, i is max, that's when we get to six. i is greater than five, well, six is greater than five, so that's good. i is seven, no, it's not, so we go into the else, and we'd say if loser.points is less than five, well, three is less than five, so I'm surprised that this one's not working. Is there something I'm forgetting to check for here? Let me restructure this one a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think we're, really what I'm trying to check is if i is six, right? Then that's when I wanna run this. Okay, so that's still not working. I wonder, uh, yeah, it's getting to false. So why could that be? Hmm. Okay, here, let's, uh, let's maybe put a little console log in here. And uh, maybe we'll just log the score. So we'll say winner.score, or wait, dot .score, is that, is that right? Yeah, dot .score, dot .score, dot .points, there we go, okay. Uh, maybe I should have just kept it points to begin with, dot .score. Yeah, okay, is that gonna work? Yeah, it's gonna work, cool. But now I'm, I'm noticing like I've got an if here and then just another if over here. And same with this, could I just like group these together? Like, okay, let me, let me try this. So this is all the stuff. Uh, actually, I guess I'll need parents on that one. So let's just X out of that. We'll put an and, we'll paste that in and We'll just put the return in there, I guess, you know? Well, will that part still work at least? Yeah, that's still working. Okay, and then loser score is less than five. We'll put an and on that one. And, uh, you yeah, know, we don't need the F there now, so let's run that. Oh, that's better. I, I think I prefer that. Is that good? Let's see. I'll try running that. And, you yeah, know, what have we got? Cool guy wins, whoa. False, nobody wins, false, false. Cool guy wins, cool guy wins. Okay, cool. So cool guy is always winning because uh, he's the winner, right? Nice guy is always gonna lose, that's too bad. Nice guys finish last. Anyway, the point is, um, I guess we're done. I mean, oh, oh, whew. that was a close one. Okay, so uh, let's just get one final comment. I think we're doing good with the comments here. So no winning conditions were met. Uh, yeah, there we go, cool. Nice use of emoji here. I think that's really important in, uh, in programming. So, okay, cool. Let's just make sure it passes the hidden as well. I hope it does. And yeah, there we go. Cool, so I like this, I think this is pretty neat. Obviously it's not quite as efficient as what we have downstairs, uh, but efficient is not always fun, I guess. Anyway, the point is, uh, this is kind of cool the way it sort of simulates it. Look, the main thing is, uh, okay, if this were in production, hmm, actually, here's the thing, because I was just about to say like, yeah, obviously I wouldn't do it this way. In some ways though, I, I do think this one has some advantages over this other one, even within a, like a, a production environment. And the reason is because clarity is really paramount in a lot of ways. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, you know, we might think that, that like execution time, the, the run time, the amount of memory uh, or the amount of stuff stored in memory, we might think like, yeah, that's, that's what's important, right? That's the really important stuff. Uh, but I, I, I think there's a case to be made for clarity in the sense that like, look, let's say you write some code for some web app, I don't know. And, uh, and you write it really like, you know, really dense, really like, not a lot of comments, not a lot of semantic use of uh, variable names and stuff like that. Let's say it just looks like junk, like code golf or something like that. And it runs really efficiently and it looks good to you. But then later, like let's say a month down the line, someone needs to maintain it. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's you and you've forgotten about what your train of thought was at the time. You're not gonna be able to understand that code. 
you know, you need for it to be clear. You need stuff like these comments to, to be able to make sense of it. You need stuff like, uh, like semantic naming conventions. You need your code to be organized and readable to be able to make sense of it later. Because otherwise, look, if you need to spend the time just making sense of what it says, or if you need to spend the time like rewriting the stuff, then that's probably not worth it. I mean, you're spending more time. It's, that's, hey, that's money, right? So, uh, I, I, that's, I think, my case for, uh, for clarity. I think it's, it's one of the most important things in code. But anyway, uh, with that said, yeah, I think in some ways this one is more clear. We could probably just, you know, grab some of the comments from here and just paste them in down here and that'll probably make it clear enough, but eh, oh well. Uh, I think we're done with this one. Let's, uh, yeah, let's move on. Nice job, everyone.